Let me introduce you to the family of Sabati Rovers. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and here we have an interesting selection of the Rover model from Sabati. Um, pretty much one that will suit sort of anyone's taste. So first of all, we have the, uh, the Rover Hunter this one is called, so it's pretty sort of minimalistic, synthetic stock. Um, I'll go into more detail in a bit, but you know, that's basically what it is. Then you've got the Tactical, which takes the, the big magazine and is in this sort of desert, deserty colour, coyote brown colour, big muzzle brake. So that might suit someone who's a, a little bit tactical. And then you've got the classic hunter, which is here, which is in this lovely wood. I'm not sure how they do that. I don't think that is actual real grain. I don't know whether it's like veneer or something, but again, that's got quite a big muzzle brake on it as well. It's just off camera. I'll show you more about that in a minute. But no guys, just wanted to sort of show you these because they are quite interesting. I've done one or two Sabati rifles on the channel. I think it was the STR that I did. Uh, year or so back. Um, these rifles are really popular with the long range shooters, you know, like the, um, not these, these Rovers as such, but a lot of uh, guys that do long range stuff, you know, prone shooting, um, F class, they really do like the Sabati rifles, like the, the STRs, like uh, other models that they do. But I've been kindly sent these from Range Right here in the UK uh, to put on the rack table and show you guys what I think about them. So here we are. So this is the one that I've actually used um, in anger, so to speak. So I've had this one on the range. They are basically, they're all in 308. So they're basically just different stocks. So I just basically just use the one just to get an idea of what they all they are all like you know um the actions are all the same as far as functionality goes they're go they're going to be all the same so rather than dirty three rifles up plus you use loads and loads of ammo which is expensive and getting rather scarce so here in the UK anyway i just pushed quite a bit of ammo through this one and i've got to tell you i'm quite impressed with it 308, very light. I mean, this thing was weighing in, or, well, it's a little bit heavier because obviously I had a scope on it, uh, but weighing in at around sort of between six and 7.3 pounds, you know, dependent on what caliber you go through, go for even. Um, but yeah, obviously a little bit more with the scope on, etc. I think I was running a can on this as well. But no guys, very impressed, pretty accurate. I didn't do a target as such on this. I basically got it zeroed and I was just pinging steel. I was a little bit ammo limited to be fair. You know, I didn't take as much out with me as what I really should have. Because I'd got I'd got several rifles to, uh, to test at the time. But no, let me tell you my thoughts and my findings on the Sabati Rover then. Taking it from the stock end then, or from the recoil pad end, a nice sort of medium soft rubber recoil pad there. Soaks up the uh, the recoil of this 308 that I was shooting anyway. Yeah, I was running it on a lead sled, so I mean, that tends to sort of take out quite a bit of the recoil anyway. Uh, well, felt recoil. The reason I do chuck these rifles in a lead sled is to sort of get rid of any sort of uh, variables, so to speak, as in my shooting. So it kind of keeps the rifle pretty rock solid as far as sort of accuracy testing and stuff goes. But no, um, a nice recoil pad anyway. Adjustable cheek piece here via that screw. There is a sling swivel stud at the rear there and obviously underneath the forend. And as you can see, there are uh, a section, there is a section of M-lock uh, there. So two slots, so you can add on, um, 
you know, a bipod or whatever, depending how you want to set the rifle up. Fairly slim profile barrel, and it is screw cut on the end there to take a moderator, if you so wish. Picatinny rail, already sort of uh, incorporated into the action there. So you're good to go as far as mounting a scope. This is a magazine fed rifle. What I find interesting about the Sabat is, is the, the magazine release. At first it takes some getting used to, but that's the mag magazine release there. You sort of have to press that and the magazine or magazines drop out. I'll just show you one. So there is a magazine, three shot, all polymer, really, really lightweight. No problems with the magazines. I, well, with this one anyway, this was the one I shot, but like I said, I had no problem whatsoever with the magazine. Uh, no feed issues or anything. I just found that a little weird, um, but yeah, you get used to it. It's all right, not a problem. It's kind of funny though, because those, because these uh, magazines are real lightweight, I thought to myself, are these that going to actually drop out when I press the mag release? But yeah, as you can see, they do. So real good. On the fore end of the stock, you've got like this uh, textured finish here. It gives you plenty of grip. Same with the pistol grip there. And then all the... Uh, Trigger guard is all polymer. And then obviously the only metal on here is the action and the barrel. The action is very, very nice. I find these Sabatis very smooth. Um, I've never, the ones that I've used, I think I've only used a couple to be fair, but I've never had a problem with the bolts on them or the action or extraction or or, or feed issues, anything. It's, they've always been really good. A little bit clunky, I ain't gonna lie. Um, when I say clunky, it's not like you'll be able to sort of just uh, operate this bolt with your little finger. It, they do need a little bit of sort of, um, you know, working, so to speak. Um, but I guess the more you shoot it, the more it wears in, you know, the better. But just a real nice um, chunky bolt. Let's get the bolt out, actually. There we go. I mean, it, it is a massive bolt. It just feels a, a lot more heavy duty than what you, you generally see. And you've got like a three lug bolt head there. And while I've got that out, I'll show you in there okay manual safety catch let's just put that back in that is so slick and smooth it is really nice actually uh, manual safety catch as you can see here so obviously that is on safe and it locks the bolt locked as well locks it locked locks the bolt up so you can't open it and then push that forward and then you're good to go. So real nice, real nice bolt, but you know, it's not sort of as refined as like a, you know, something a lot more expensive. Let me just say that. I like the bolt um, handle. Uh, it's quite, quite nice. It's just, um, you know, it's almost, it's a little bit tactical, I suppose, but I like it. I like a big bolt handle. It just, you know, I like something to sort of grab hold off and, you know, to operate the gun. So really, really nice. A few more specs on this rifle. Well, they're, they're available, or these rifles, should I say, available in loads of calibers. 243, 270, uh, 65 by 55, 65 Creedmoor, 65 PRC, 7 mil uh, Rem Mag, 306, um, 308, 300 Win, win Mag as well. So. There's pretty much quite, you know, all calibers. So you're pretty much good to go. Barrel lengths vary from between 22 to 24 inch. Uh, cold, forged, cold hammer forged barrels on these rifles as well, which is 
nice, you know, it's, they've just got decent barrels on them. Um, especially, uh, now these ones, interestingly, haven't got the uh, multi-radial rifling like a lot of the big brothers of uh, these, the, the bigger Sabatis, so to speak, the more, the more sort of target orientated rifles that have the multi-radial rifling. These ones do not. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So that is the Sabati Rover Hunter. Just the basic form there in the synthetic stock. If you want something a little bit more Gucci, then you go for the Hunter Classic, which is this, which is exactly the same rifle, exactly the same action, barrel, etc. Same sort of setup with the stock. Obviously this one is in wood, but you have a big muzzle brake on the end just to make things a little bit louder. And that thing, trust me guys, certainly will. The stock is really nice. Um, at first I was like, God, what is that stock? But I think it is some sort of veneer or some sort of treatment that they do um, on the stock. I, I'm, I'm certain, I'm sure that is not a hardwood. It would be like a blooming grade one um, wood, you know, it would cost a fortune. But I really do like the effect of it. It's still lightweight, still weighing in at roughly the same sort of weight. Uh, everything obviously is the same. You've still got your M lock uh, slot there. You've still got your sting swivel stored. Magazine fed still, you know, uh, no sort of floor plate or anything. Just a lovely looking rifle if you want the wood effect. Let's show you the other side. Just really nice, really, really nice. So that is a Hunt Classic if you wanna be, you know, you want something a little classic. Let's move these round a little bit. Let's shuffle these rifles about. And then, yep, yeah, you've guessed it, this one's my favorite. Really, I should have took this one for a spin, but they're the same rifles, guys, they're the same rifles. This is the tactical version. And look at that. So this one has a synthetic stock, same um, sort of configuration as that, you know, same patterning and everything. But this one's got a soft touch rubber coating on it, which is really nice. Slightly different bolt handle as well. So more of a tactical bolt handle there. Same sort of bolt throw. So it's like a 45 degree bolt throw that is. Really, really cool. Big muzzle brake, again, to make things nice and loud. And then you've got an extended magazine release here, which I kind of prefer, rather than pressing a button inside the trigger at guard, I kind of like pressing that. I just find that is, I don't know, it, it just seems better. And then you get a big, uh, I think that's a 10 round mag there full polymer mag with this rifle. So, let's get that in, that's gone in. So I really, really like this version. How long and how durable this rubber coating is, I don't know. Uh, hopefully it's, you know, a bit, well, I've seen on air rifles that have, have, that have this uh, soft touch rubber coating, I've seen it start to sort of degrade over time. Uh, hopefully it wouldn't with this. I don't know what causes that. You tell me guys, I guess it's probably UV light. Would it be sunlight that sort of starts to, um, you know, not do work, soft touch rubber any good? I don't know, um, but I'm sure this will this will be fine. It, it, feels, it feels lovely to touch, but it feels pretty tough as well. So I don't know. But that's the uh, the tactical, I do love this, this rifle. It is my favorite. I mean, you guys would have known that just by the color of it, um, but really, really cool. Just an option, guys, or options for you guys. You know, if you are um, looking for a hunting rifle, something a little bit different, these are a lot, I say a lot cheaper. They're, they're sort of cheaper than, let's say, some, well, some, they are very, a lot cheaper than like your high-end um, 
tikas, for example. So it's just something, just an option for you. And I've got to, I've got to say, I've enjoyed using uh, that one. I just think they're real, um, real nice rifles to operate. And like I said, my experience of Sabati rifles shooting them um, is not massive. You know, I've only shot um, what probably three or four now. Uh, but like I said, I've I've not had any problems with with shooting them. You know, as far as accuracy goes, as far as um, extraction, reliability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, they've just been really, really good to shoot. I oh, didn't mention as well on the uh, classic Hunter and on this one, you have Sabatis. I did show you the brake, but it is actually called the Jet Brake. So. Very cool, very cool. But no guys, I don't think there's a vast um, amount of videos on YouTube regarding uh, the Sabati rifle. So I am gonna try and work through them all for you and uh, show you all about them. But Sabati, if you didn't know, is Italian. They do make some uh, real nice stuff. Like I said earlier in the video, they. Um, a lot of the long range guys love the Sabatis because I think it's because of the multi-radial rifling. So I think it's, it's, it's like minimal friction on the bullet, if that makes sense. So, and you have sort of long barrel life on, on those rifles. But like I said, these ones haven't got the multi-radial rifling on these ones because at the end of the day, these are, these are hunters at the end of the day. So it's not like you're going to be pushing thousands of rounds through them you know um so you know at the range or whatever but no very cool i do like them i do like them uh quite a lot especially this one i might actually take this one for a spin the trigger was quite nice on this rifle single stage trigger we'll give them a pull in fact what would be interesting is if we give them all a pull obviously they are all safe if they're not my neighbours aren't going to be very happy, but let's uh, give uh, give these a pull. So first of all, no, well, let's pull the one that I actually used. Okay, three pounds, 7.1 ounces. Let's see what the others do, just out of interest. Three pounds, 2.7. Oh, that was a little bit heavier. Four pounds, 8.7 ounces on the Hunter Classic. But yeah, the uh, Sabati Rover family. Just thought I would show you guys, show you all about them, give you a bit of a look and uh, my opinion on these rifles. Not going too techy, guys, on this video. You know, I'm just giving you your, your sort of working man's look at these rifles and um you know without being sort of snobby or anything like that you know some people are like oh i'll only shoot a blazer or whatever um it's not about that guys you, you know times are hard for for everyone at the minute if you if you are looking for a decent rifle that will do the job and it certainly will do the job and you know and you want something a little bit different then here's an option for you. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. That is Rack and Load. See ya.